call this meeting to order at 606. And would you call the bill, please? Adams? Here. Jones? Here. Safadi? Excused. Jackson? Here. Brownlee? Here. Trojanski? Here. A.G.? Here. Albers? Here. Our first uh, piece of legislation, 2014-21, is the um, medical uh, piece of legislation, and it is on a third reading tonight. So we have an opportunity to to uh, pass this. And um, if there are, would you, would you like to read it once again? Do you think that's necessary? Mm -hmm. Mr. Go ahead and read it once again. Ordinance, more. yeah. Ordinance number 2014-21, an ordinance amending section 260.09 of the codified ordinances amending the medical, dental, and vision care insurance, employee contributions, and authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Medical Mutual Health Care pertaining to group medical insurance for the non-union full-time employees and declaring an emergency. Now I'm going to ask for discussion for the final time. Is there any? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Madam one, one moment, let's well, move. We can move first if we want to do it that way. Make a motion, please, to approve. To adopt. To adopt. To adopt. I'm sorry. May I have a motion to adopt? So. Second. Okay. Discussion, please. Yeah, I just have one or two questions, Mayor. Yes. On the health care work, Harry. Uh, it says we got. They're going to be paying a hundred dollars. Increase. What are they paying now? You know. It was seventy-five. Is it? Did it just Actually, in the legislation, Alex, it showed where it was crossed mm -hmm. off and the increase. So wasn't that what they were originally paying? On the bottom. On the bottom. It was seventy-five. Mm -hmm. Hundred. On the bottom of the medical plan, it said uh, employee. Contribution would also be increasing to $100 for single, individual single coverage, and $200 for family coverage per month. Right. That's what it says. Right. Mm -hmm. Find it? It's on the yeah, first yeah. page. Sure. I'm looking for it, but yeah, I've read it. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Mayor? Well, I have on the, uh, the um, memo that came out on March 10th. Are you talking about the out of pocket? No, sir. I'm talking about the employee contributions will increase $100 a month for single and 200 for family. The single is now 75. 75. So it's going up to 100. Up to 100. Up to, in fact, it's $25 more. 25 more. Right. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the family is $150. It's $150. And so it will be increasing by $50 to take it to $200. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. And are we going to be offering a, a cop-out, cop-out to employees, say they're in the plan and they want to go with their husband or wife plan or go to another plan on their own? We, we have in the past, and we've had employees do that. In the middle of the year, in fact, they have opted out and gone on their spouse's plan. So the answer to your question would be yes. You don't know how much they get if they opt out. Do we pay them like a bonus or? Right. A I believe it's a hundred and fifty a month for a family, and I think if you're single, it's it might be a hundred. It's a little less, I think. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, this question was asked, and in a way, I don't understand it. When we asked for a contract, it was stated that the contract would come afterwards. Mm -hmm. I, I have an I have an issue with that. I don't know if anything that you agree to or sign up for without the ability to have some type of writing in your hand stating what's going to be in the contract. Is that something that's normally done per se or um, 
That is, is that the norm? That is the norm. Madam President, if I could yes. answer the councilman. Um, this, this memo, which was passed out on March 10th, basically tells you everything which is changing. Now, it's very common practice that any time we, we go out for quotes or RFPs or RFQs or bids, when you have it ratified by city council and legislation form, a contract always comes later. Contracts are very thick, as I'm sure you know. They're usually bound in a booklet and it has much, much detail. Now that's for any service that the city provides, whether it's a, a public improvement or, uh, in this case, medical insurance or anything. You know, the contract itself with, with all of the detail always comes later. Okay. But there's normally something more than just um, a few paragraphs. Now, this is based on the last contract, and these are the only things that's changing in what the original contract was, and you're just changing this part? This is the, the health insurance that's being offered. <coughs> so it's, it's changed. Uh, obviously, it's changed a lot. But every city council for the last 20-some years passing legislation, contract comes later. The actual thick contract booklet that explains everything. You do, you do have this, don't you? Yes. That, that explains the basic uh, differences in cost, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, at my job, they give us that, and they just consider that a quote. And that just tells you, you know, whatever. But we're not, are we changing our carrier, too? Or is Medical it, mutual still the same. Yeah, so we're just changing rates. Right. Oh, okay, but that was one of the things I asked with. The basic contract is the same, but the only thing that's changing are what we see here is the rates. I can tell you, you know, Mr. Jackson, I understand, you know, your your question. I myself, I mean, when I became an elected official, I was always amazed at every year how the city's health and church changed carriers and providers and in network, out of network. I mean, I was in a union probably like you were at one point where on a three-year contract, the insurances were the same for that three-year period. But unlike public or, uh, you know, in, in this line of work, it's, it can change every year, which, you know, is like you may go to one doctor one year and then next year you're told, oh, out of network, you can't go there, you gotta go somewhere else now. You know, it's, it's a totally different animal. And I think uh, we talked about this uh, previously, eventually, with all of the unions coming in, the anticipated savings was looking at 440000 We've already pitched the, the bill to the unions once. A couple of the unions have already had it. Uh, a couple of meetings, we've talked about it with them, so the Teamsters and the mechanics. And as we said before, too, this is um, going to be going into effect 90 days after the mayor signs it, so that's 30 days from now, if we pass whatever we do tonight. It won't go effect till June 1st per Obamacare, all insurance changes Correct. of June 1st. Right. So we've got plenty of time, and then we'll be back at the table again. So it could be an interim kind of plan. Any other further discussion? <coughs> Questions? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yes. Dental and the vision stays the same. Is that the same? It's in this plan currently, yes. Okay. Do we have any other comments, questions? Are we ready to vote? Okay. Would you call the roll, please? Adams? Yes. Jones? Yes. Sabrani? Oh, he's not here. Jackson? Yes. Brownlee? Yes. Trojanski? Yes. AG? Yes. Your, the vote is passed by vote of six years, and this legislation will become effective 30 days after the mayor's signature. Okay. Moving on to the <coughs> second second reading of Ordinance 214 27. Ordinance number 2014 27. In order to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Maple Heights, 
State of Ohio for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2014, and declaring an emergency. Okay, I'm going to open this up to uh, questions. We are going to pass this tonight. Um, oh. It's only mm -hmm. a second reading. Okay. So we'll open it up to questions, and I'm going to ask that you uh, be recognized before you speak, please. Madam Chair. Mr. Jackson. Um, I sent an email to Mrs. Crow Crowell. Did you get a chance to see it? I sent it this morning. Oh, I sure did it. We had a problem with the internet this morning. Mm -hmm. so I got it. It could have been lost in that, but no, I did not see it. Uh, I did check my email. Why did you ask it now? Yeah. I think. Go ahead. Oh, well, um, the basic question was um, pertaining to the swimming pool and to the fire stations. If you had any insight on if they were going to remain open or was that totally left to the director and to the fire chief as far as their budget goes? I'm going to defer to the mayor. I don't know if there's a decision to close it or not. That email should have been sent to me. The yeah. finance director is not going to close the pool. Okay. Uh, your, your name was on it. I didn't get it either. Like, I think what happened was anyone who sent an email in this morning when the internet was down, it's probably out in the cloud or cyberspace somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I, I got like a pittance of the normal emails I usually get in a day. So I, you know, I, any of those decisions ultimately have to be made by me. Okay. I did send it to you. Okay. I, maybe you could resend it tomorrow because okay. I can certainly respond, you know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Brown? Um, I noticed that on the proposed budget, uh, funds 215 and 216, which are the police and fire pensions, there was no appropriations made from those funds, and I was wondering why. Those funds technically. Um, have been reserved to pay the accrued liability for the fire and or police if necessary. I don't know if you're familiar with the indebtedness that ends, I think, in 2035, something that was imposed upon the majority of municipalities in the county. It has some fluke to do with some calculation many, many years ago. So we're given those dollars to help offset the payments for that. And so technically, the only payments that should be coming out of those would be that indebtedness is paid twice a year in May and November. Um, I was not able to put my hands on a bill, but uh, it comes twice a year in November and <coughs> May. But it's set aside for that amount, and it comes from the county. Okay, so we will have to pay that eventually. Yes, we have to pay it. This, um, I think, you know, I can't even recall it. I see, I was looking for an invoice. I don't have the invoice. Okay, yet. so that would need to be in our, our annual appropriations, then, if we're going to make those payments throughout right. the year. Yes, they would be in the appropriations. Okay, so they would need to be in this form of that. So we have about a million or a million two that should be added to our appropriations then, according to uh, past expenditures. Just a moment, please. Just a moment, please. Yeah, I just wonder if I'm trying to figure out where he is. I think it's probably nine or ten. Eight or nine. Funds to 15 and 16. To 15 and 16. First page. The bottom of the first page. Bottom of the first page. Is that where you are on page 8 of the appropriations? Yeah, I'm on fund 215 and 16. Page 8? Um, yeah, that's page 8. Oh, okay. I was trying to get Mr. Jackson. Page eight. So, I see that last year our spending in those funds <coughs> was roughly $1.2 million in 2013. 
215 and 216 as a sum of them. Oh, that must be something else. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. That's, sure in, what you're that's in line at. with the uh, expenditures before that as well. I don't know what you're looking at in terms of prior year, but it's not. Well, that's all right. Um, but that's, that's what it was according to um, the expense report from last year. Okay, well, I know it's not that amount. It's not. It is. Then what amount is it, Ms. Cole? It would probably be covered by the levy amount that's sent, and like I say, I'll get you the bill for that when it mm -hmm. comes in May. Well, I think we, if we're doing our annual appropriations, we should have all of our spending for the entire year in here, should we not? Well, that's true, but you, if you remember, I prefaced my presentation last night with two things. First of all, we will be revising this budget in May, number one. Okay. And then also, all during the year, you can revise the budget at any time. So this is not locked in stone per se. You can revise it on April the 2nd if you care to. You, have, you can revise any time you want. So the fact that there may appear to be an omission, I don't think it's a great issue at this point. Because it would not exceed the appropriation uh, it would not exceed the revenue that we receive from county. I'm not sure where you're getting a million dollars. The million dollars from is almost the, the, the entire budget reports, for the uh, police. I'm sorry? I'm getting from the uh, city's own expense report. I doubt it very soon. I need you to show me that. Okay. If you want, he will come over here. I'll show it to you right now. This sheet, is it relevant? I'm not sure what he's looking at. Yeah. He's, talking, he's talking about the bottom two. Mm -hmm. On this one sheet. On page then, eight, no. I do not have a million dollars in those funds. So that's why I said I'm not sure what he's looking at. That's all right, Ms. Ms. Kroll. We have it right here in the expense report. Okay, well, I'm not Fund really 215 and, and 16. Mm -hmm. For 2013, year-to-date ex uh, ex expenditures, according to this report, was printed on January 4th. In 2015, we had a total amount spent of $583,000. And then in fund 216, we had a total amount spent of $659,000. And that may be, again, it's not relevant to this in the sense that 2013 is not part of it yet. So I'm not going to discuss those figures. Uh, you're looking at a document that's not relevant to this. And I think if we could stick to the point in all of the information that we received last night, our job right now is to look at the appropriations for 2014 and either agree or disagree. I think we'll have time once more information comes forward to look at the other expenditures. But right now, that's our, our prime. Are Madam other, Chair, I would like to ahead. ask um, Councilman Brownlee if he put together figures why he omitted other members of council from getting those same said figures. Would you like them? I would imagine that usually when I pass out literature, I don't eliminate any members of council, especially if that's trying would to you, skew would you like them? the budget. I would I have a copy of it. So do we all need to ask? Could you pass that down? Do you have one for everyone? No, I do not have one for everyone. Is there a reason why you don't have one for everyone? Well, last night you expressed the concern that I didn't have the right figures, so I didn't think you'd want them. Yes, John. And these figures came from where? Oh, By from um, from the expense report, okay. from the revenue report from last year as well, also from the County Budget Commission certified uh, estimate of resources. <coughs> also from Ms. Kroll's uh, appropriations ordinance that she brought forward last night, as well as last year's final appropriations ordinance, ordinance 2013-78. Wow, it took a lot of work. If I may, uh, based on the certificate of estimated resources, if you would look at 215 and 216, you will see that the county allocated $73,000 to cover that expense that I had brought forth, not like 500000 And if you would go to your revenue statement, that is a four-page document that I passed out last night. It was the third set of headouts. There's like four pages that start with property taxes. If you return to page two, I'm sorry, the first page. 
Mm -hmm. And if you would go to 215, which is almost at the bottom, mm -hmm. if you look at the property taxes, that's the only thing that's relevant in terms of this discussion, it's the 73000 One of the comments that I made repeatedly last night is that all of those transfer in numbers, which is not new dollars, it's just monies coming from the general fund that I did not include because it was not new revenue. So I think your numbers may include that, Mr. Brownlee. And if we do that, then I have to go back and reduce the general fund. So I that's, think that's not exactly the point of the whole discussion. Is that if we uh, if we deflate one number, it makes us feel like we can inflate another <coughs> expenditure. So my concern is that we're not looking realistically at the expenses of the year, so that we can bump up other numbers. And then whenever those payments come due, we'll, we'll revise our, our expenditures as we have done in past years to increase them so that we finally cover, hopefully, all of our bases. I don't believe that's the appropriate way to go about uh, budgeting for any organization, especially not an organization such as ours, the uh, city of public government. So I would say that we need to look uh, a little more closely at the expenditures that we had year and every year previous and prepare for those expenditures and, and make sure we don't neglect um, any of them to our own detriment. I beg to differ, oh, yeah, go, go right ahead. I beg to differ and not to belabor this point. If you would like me to make my presentation over, I will. There's some important points that you seem to have missed. When I started last night, the one thing that I highlighted is that our key uh, concern is the general fund. The others outside of the general fund are pretty much self-sustaining. Money comes in and money goes out. And I remember there was a question or a comment that if there was any residual that we could use that. And I especially said no, because it wants to start with 201 going forward, but either designated funds or restricted. So the matter that there is no offsetting in your mind expense has no relevance in this conversation because those dollars are not to be used for general purpose funds. And then again, the fact that this transfer in, that's not revenue. Those are not revenue dollars. Those are what you would call paper interest. So those have no you know, purpose in here. Um, what I did is to show you what the property taxes are, which is the 73,000. That's the amount, as I stated, which I highlighted on the estimated that the county give to us, and those numbers have to be commensurate with each other. So I don't think your points are valid or relevant to this discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, in looking over the uh, budget and comparing it to uh, some of the allocations that we had last year, there have been significant cuts, and uh, we know there have been cuts in many different ways, but it looks like we're holding our uh, our overtime down, and it looks like we're as most of the departments are are holding their own with the minimum. So, are, are there any other questions, Alex? Yeah, Irene. More or less, what we're doing is way I see it. Is, I'm sorry. We're uh, appropriating money for the city to operate till we actually come up. In a nutshell, we could say that, uh, you know, the budget is what we have and what we know. And what we discussed last night is that for sure it may, the budget will be changed whether the levy passes or whether it fail, because we'll have to make some adjustments. This is to keep the doors open for us to operate on April the 1st. And as I mentioned, on April the 2nd, if you wish, you can revise the budget. This budget is not set for the whole year except as it said tonight another appropriation legislation can come through every month if you wish to say we want to revise the budget so but i think the purpose right now is based on the information that we have and the experience that i've seen in terms of the expenditures and not just looking totally at last year if you remember also from last night i noted that you don't have a comparison because it's apples and oranges the expenses from last year that may have been booked, which is maybe the statement that Mr. Um, Brownlee is looking at. 
that is subject to audit and we do the gap, all of that may disappear. But even if it is true, if we decide this year that we don't want to spend a half a million dollars, even though those numbers are true, it makes no difference. I mean, that was last year. And this year we're saying, and what I'm saying is that those two funds are set aside for a special purpose designated by the county and not so much for operational use. It's for approved liability for um, the police OP and F. Like I say, there were some big, I can't remember exactly how many years, but I do know it was scheduled to end. It was like a 20, 30 year deal and they were giving us funding to help offset the expense. And the 500,000 that he's probably referring to, I would suspect that it may, I don't have that in front of me, but I would suspect that maybe there was some salaries charged to that, or either the OP and F from the general fund. But if we did that, it'll put it in a deficit. I mean, we're only gonna get 73,000 in, and we charge $500,000 expenses, then you're creating a deficit. So that's why the expenses re reside in the general fund where they are, because it's for operations. You know, to operate our police, fire service, administration, those are different fund operations, except as those designated by special grants or whatever. 